Remember the movie Freedom Riders starring Hilary Swank? It was about a teacher determined to reach at-risk inner-city high school students. Well, a similar model is now being used at Commerce High School in Springfield. And in this American Graduate Report, Connecting Point contributor Carol Lee McGrath talks with teachers, administrators, and students about this program that teaches through challenging, relevant, project-driven activities. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen a public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. It almost sounds like a party in Mr. Damboise's reading class at Commerce High School. But this is where a lot of hard work gets done. Okay, there's no talking, there's no jokes. Brian no Damboise is doing what you might okay. consider a warm-up or and an icebreaker with his ninth graders. He starts with the basics. Step to the line if you like the New York Giants. <laughs> As the game progresses, he gets okay, into more back. serious topics. Step to the line if you live in a single parent home. Step to the line if somebody close to you has ever served time in jail. Forcing them gently to present and talk about themselves with each other really opens up students' minds to each other, and at least when we're here, we're going to feel comfortable and feel safe to work. I attribute a lot to, to what I learned um, in California and, and the sort of model of the Freedom Riders way. Dan Boyce was part of a group from Springfield who went to Long Beach, California to attend the Freedom Writers Institute. Erin Gruel used writing and journaling to help her students in the mid-1990s reach their full potential. What was amazing is when my Freedom Writers wrote their stories, um, and it was like a message in a bottle, we, we were hoping that their parents and their community would read their stories. And when it became a book, we realized that other kids and other communities had similar stories. And so I was very fortunate that the 150 students that I had graduated and went to college, and we wanted to replicate that same kind of success with students everywhere, but specifically right here in Springfield. Lydia Martinez, the assistant superintendent of Springfield Public Schools, also went to California for the Freedom Writers training. It's about how to reach the children to help them through, the, through that baggage that they bring to school every day that keeps them from learning whatever the subject is. I ask kids to write about what stresses them out. It's out in the world now and I think it relieves some of that stress. Okay, so that's our final SRI test to no, show our growth. We're always year. looking for ways okay. to enhance what, what our teachers for? are What's doing. And so if I can get 15 of our teachers to be trained to each reach 150 kids, that's that many more children that we have that want to stay in school, that are learning, that are graduating, that we're not losing to the streets. The students in Mr. Damboise's class are behind in reading. He says any of them could be at risk for just giving up, but not Kwame Lowe. The football standout has made great strides in all of his classes, because of the extra boost from Mr. Damboise, who is also one of Kwame's football coaches. Grades, I'm always on it. I'm trying to get on it, do better every day I can, stay after, do what I got to do. But it hasn't been easy. Kwame is still reeling from the loss of his older sister. She was murdered a year ago in Springfield. Writing his feelings down this year has helped him cope. Like, fifth or 15, I had, like, I had a big experience because I lost my sister around 14. So like, in the paper, I could like write down what I really feel. So I write that down, read it over, probably let damn boys read it, just to like get it off my chest. Kwame's close family friend and classmate, Naya Haynes, is also in Mr. Damboise's Boyce's class. Naya plays volleyball for Commerce, works part-time, and still manages to get an A in algebra. She says writing her feelings has also helped her. I have a lot of deaths in my family lately, so I've been writing about that lately. I let Kwame read it a lot, and it just it lets me express my feelings out, let somebody read it. Noelle Alexander, a sophomore, was in Mr. Damboise's class last year. Like Kwame and Naya, she is also dealing with tragedy in her family. In the beginning of last year, ninth grade, uh, I lost my cousin due to gang violence. They've had things to deal with outside of their control that are sometimes tragic, sometimes they're just tough and often school is not the most important thing or it's something just to get through. And um, I know Mr. Gamboise is a good teacher and 
He helped me a lot throughout his class, so I'm grateful for him and his class. Mr. Damboy says his biggest goal is to make kids believe in themselves and to believe that despite the challenges they may face at school or the challenges they may face at home, that they can still succeed as long as they don't quit on themselves. Now, when you went through that trauma, did you just want to quit on everything? Actually, I, funny thing, I didn't. I didn't at all. I really wanted to like make it now. And now I'm like determined to go to college and play football, hopefully get into the NFL. By writing, they're learning how to let go of everything that's holding them back. I mean, it's hard, yeah, but it will all get better because I wasn't the best student, but I'm trying my best now, so. You're not going to quit? No. No. So that's this quiz. It's going to work on things such as the story elements. No one in the class is not capable of reading. They've just what else? fallen out of love with it or they've had struggles along the way and given up. And that's kind of the focus I try and spin on it, is that we need to work hard to, to catch up. And we need to, instead of feeling sorry for ourselves for being here, um, let's work hard and get ourselves out of here. Reporting for Connecting Point, I'm Carolee McGrath.